pretty, but I'm shaking. I'm not happy right now. There he is. He's curious and he's not moving. Hey folks, Marty up north. Uh, special video for you guys. This is a trip I've been wanting to do a long, long time. I've been coming to Carnivan Lake and these little tarn lakes in Kananaskis for years. And uh, I've always looked at the map and I knew that there was a way to travel from uh, Lake of the Horns over the Continental Divide into BC and then come back in to Alberta by going around Mount Strachan and Mount Muir and then coming by uh, Carnivan Lake. So that's what this video is about. It's, uh, it's a traverse uh very 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 seldom uh used trail so i uh, hope you enjoy this video back in one of my favorite areas the uh highwood river area of kananaskis it is uh monday june 22nd so technically today is the second longest one of the two second longest days uh, of the year for us here in uh, Canada and uh, yesterday being the summer solstice and I'm leaving late at 225 but I'm absolutely not worried because I have daylight until about 11 o'clock so and my destination today I have two choices I'm gonna attempt to circuit a loop uh, hike up First I'm going to cross the Highwood River and then I'm going to hike up either to Lake of the Horns and then go through the Wherry Gap and then around Mount Strachan and come out at Carnarvon Lake and go down the chain section which I think is the way I'm going to do this loop. I'm going to do it counterclockwise because if I do it clockwise uh, I think the part of the loop that's going to be the obstacle is going to be the actual gap itself might be snow there because it's north facing but we'll see uh, I'm not stressed it's uh, it's something I've never done but I've always wanted to cross over into BC and hike by those two lakes so thought today would be the perfect day to do that I got uh, two and a bit days of food my my new curve uh, 46 liter pack. There's nobody around here. Should be fun. actually doesn't look too bad that's Carnivan Lake tucked in there now I'm going behind that I'm going by that pyramid one which is Mount McPhail first this is the usual spot where we cross for years but now I can see there's been a trail well established and people are going way up over there and crossing somewhere here because this is impassable right now. Wow, it's flowing fast. Oh, time to put on the river shoes. looking forward to this. This is higher than last year when I came with Karen, I think.
Nope, 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 nope. Too high. Not doing this alone. All right, once I go, it's like committing yourself because it gets fucking deep. Holy shit. I'm gonna have to find another spot to cross two days from now. That was cold. Holy shit. But then two days from now, I'm gonna leave my boots on because right now I'm crossing with my Crocs and it's slippery and poor footing. But if I cross with my boots on two days from now, I could just cross with my boots on and get soaking wet and who cares because uh, I'm two kilometers from the truck. But today, I did not want to get my boots wet. Woo! That was intense. Woo! That wakes you up. Holy samoli. Yeah, that was up to the crotch. That was deep. And I still got this side channel here to cross. This one's downright easy. <laughs> Relatively. Oh. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Woohoo! The water was high, soaking wet there. I took my cell phone out of my pocket. Good thing. It all, it, it, right at my crotch. It just, you know, the waves hit and come up. But you saw how I did that. So sometimes I go against the current up. But in this case, I could see that the river was, how do I explain it? Uh, getting faster because it was dropping quickly on that side and there was a bit of a current in the middle where uh, forced by that sandbar but all I had to do is commit myself and go you just don't want to hesitate you hesitate you fall you're in trouble so um, now I've done this before anyways now I'm just gonna dry my feet and uh, continue my hike a few minutes after the river crossing you get to actually over there is an outfitter camp and a few minutes after the river crossing, you get to this intersection. That leads to uh, Lake of the Horns, and that leads to Carnarvon. So I'm gonna loop that way and come back this way. Two, three, four, five, big claws, not retracted, big grid. Trail's actually so dry that I can't see a lot of footprints in some sections where suddenly I go through a little muddy area. There's lots of deer tracks and moose tracks, uh, but I'm not, but humans are a lot lighter. So it absolutely doesn't look like any humans were here before me recently. Although there's a bike trail, but it's a bit dusty, or tire tracks. Oh. It's important to stop and take breaks and enjoy the scenery. Rehydrate. There's nobody else out here today.
Uh, that's McPhail. All right. That that pyramid shaped peak is uh, McPhail. The lake is in there, and you can see there's snow around the lake. And that is the hill of flowers. I'd say it's not looking good for getting to the lake. And the lake's only at about 2,200 meters. I need to get over a gap that's 2,400 meters. An old trapper's box. Trail like this got lots of blind corners, you know? So it's important to, hey bear! Just yell out once in a while and give him advance warning. Whoa, never pass up a nice clean supply of water like this. Yeah. That doesn't get used too often. This is new. I saw this from a distance and it looked like a, a bear at first, but I absolutely do not remember that from last year. All right, so I came from over there. I'm at a junction here, but it's, it's not very visible, but I'm pretty certain that that's the junction that goes up to what's called the Hill of the Flowers. Somebody should mark it, flag it, do something, but it doesn't look used very often. Oh boy, I forgot about this. There's a big, big, big beaver dam here. <sighs> Hopefully it's solid and I can walk all on one side of it. Look at this thing, massive. I walked all along it. Now I'm on this side, pretty easy. Whoops. Ah. You Americans have the bald eagle as a symbol, uh, which is impressive, but the beaver, now that's impressive. And I'm a professional engineer and I have an engineering stamp. Maybe I'll take a picture and post it here, just show you what it looks like. But uh, my engineering stamp has a beaver. So I think the beaver is a perfect example of, uh, of engineering. And uh, I think it's a proud Canadian symbol, the beaver. not get wet I gotta cross there's the trail this is all water coming down from uh, the lake I'm so lazy in a way I hate getting my feet wet so I always find a way to skip across I could have gotten my feet wet because I know for a fact I'm right at my campground but why bother okay this is the first campsite and the tent can go there. Nice rock to sit on, nice fire pit. Quite a bit of wood around here. There's another campsite there. But first I want to show you this. So, the traverse that I'm doing requires that I do 32, 33 kilometers. So, three 10 kilometer days, which is nothing. Right now it's 5.30, I did a 10 kilometer day and uh, 
I'm gonna stop because tomorrow I have a 10 kilometer day in an area that I've never been in before so I don't know what kind of bushwhacking I might be against so I need to have a full day tomorrow and right now I could conceivably hike another you know hour or so but I don't know if there'll be a nice campsite whereas I know there's one here so I'm just gonna stop here for tonight it is late it's 538 and I have a few things I want to videotape but I just want to show you where I'm heading tomorrow so tomorrow I'm climbing that wall and actually I can tell right now I'm not gonna go to the base of that wall because that's not that far and who knows what's over there but that's where I'm climbing tomorrow I'm going over that wall and over that to that peak and back down the other side so the crest over there there's no snow on this side which is good which means there's probably there shouldn't be any snow on the other side because the other side is north facing but I might encounter a lot of water along the way like this I'm gonna be getting wet tomorrow well that's why I came for it's an opportunity to just get away and explore and just be on my own Please be intact, please be intact. <sighs> Holy shit. No, this isn't it. This is it. Is it? <laughs> yep. This is where we camped last year. I'm gonna make this into my home again. Somebody was busy reconstructing everything. That's impressive. Kill the flowers. So when I'm coming to a site like this, when I'm coming to a site, you know, this is random wilderness camping. This is not an established campsite. There's no tent pads, although I've been here before. I, I need to find a place to put my tent. And so several Several considerations are, are important. The first one is, I try and of course find a spot that's flat. This isn't flat, although it looks flat. This looks flat, and my tent is small, so I can put it here. The front here is relatively flat. This is flat once I remove this branch. So I think this is where I'm gonna put it. And once I found my spot, I'm, I'm thinking about what's underneath. Is it rocks or grass? I'm thinking about where the water is going to flow if it rains. Is it in a low spot where it might put puddle and pool underneath me? I'm also thinking about where the sun's coming up because I like to have my tent get hit by the sun first thing in the morning. So, you know, a lot of consideration. So when I look at this spot, I'm going to plant the camera and videotape here, but I'm going to... I'm gonna I'm gonna clear it a little bit because this looks good and it's not too far from the fire but far enough that sparks and embers won't hit the tent and perhaps uh, damage it so now and generally speaking I'd prefer to be in an area that has water close by the water is over there by the creek you know a couple hundred yards which is fine and there's lots of firewood and uh, places to hang food but I don't have a great field of vision if an animal were to come but this is a good compromise so I think I'll put it right here if it's not perfectly flat it's fine as long as I you know a slight slope no more than five five degrees kind of thing and I'll put my head up high but pretty sure this this looks darn good it's gonna be just fine Uh. All right, let's get to
This one will go in like that and I'll tighten it on the other side. The fly is also color coded. Like anything else, you start easy, you start loose and you go around and then you tighten everything. So one in. Yeah, you're, it, it's designed for your head to be on this side. Because I'm not with my wife, I can leave the vestibule open. She's paranoid. She's always closed in the vestibule. So, nothing fancy about the vestibule. You just roll it up. Not a huge vestibule. It just holds a tent. But getting, or a tent, a pack. But getting in and out of it is actually pretty easy. You just get in sideways. Like this. You know, beaver cut this poplar down and a year later it's already growing. Pretty incredible. It's not the only one. Poplars are favorite food of the beaver. I've encountered bears on this trail twice. Uh, first time I was here about three years ago when I was here solo with uh, Tika and I'll put a card to that video and you can check out the timestamp and go right to it but coming down from lake of the horns i was making noise and i had a bell on tika and tika was about 20 yards in front of me maybe a little bit less and all of a sudden a grizzly bear poked up and looked up at us and boy did i grabbed the bear spray quickly luckily he just bolted and disappeared but he was gorgeous he was cinnamon colored but and then I was camping at that site that time and he came by again later that night and uh, made me a little nervous but uh, uh, reinforced two things one is bells on dogs and people are insufficient you need to make a ton of noise and number two is when you're in an area like this even when you're just walking around to go get water like this you got to have your bear spray Camp chores are done. Time to take off the boots and put on the camp shoes, which in my case is my Crocs. firewood there's no shortage of it around here unfortunately it's all crappy dead poplar which burns quickly but it's plentiful um, I, you know I prefer a nice spruce or a pine but uh, these are old mature pines uh, no dead ones around uh, lots of dead poplar and you can see how the poplar grows back quickly and the beavers just gone to town on the poplar. I didn't even want to reach my camera which is right there. I grabbed my phone instead because look at the size of this right there. Ground squirrel, not or groundhog or gopher. Richardson ground squirrel. Big sucker. Curious. I'm in his territory. <laughs> He's looking at me. Son of a bitch. That big white bear is right here. Fuck. Let me show him to you. See him?
Hey bear, go away. Bad bear, go away. Go away. Shit. Time for a fire real quick. Nervous right now. I'm shaking. Look at my hand. Take the safety off the spray. Well, he's not cinnamon, he's white. Don't need this aggravation right now. Uh, it's pretty, but I'm shaking. I'm not happy right now. There he is. He's curious and he's not moving. That's why I didn't like this spot in particular. Like I said, I, I, I got too many blind spots. Ah. Hey, Ben! He's right there. You see him? Ah! Rah! 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 Get away! Shit, am I standing in his food or something? Has he got something here that he wants? Just ran. I don't know if he finally decided, but he's gonna come back. Oh shit, right, right there. Frick, he's close. I don't know if he moved on or not. I kind of have no choice. I'm gonna have to go investigate and check out over there. Uh, you know, and. I mean, I said, I've been here before. There's been bears before. This is prime grizzly bear habitat. We're, we're in this, just, just below the Alpine. There's avalanche slopes everywhere. They're looking for carrion, dead animals that got, you know, swept in avalanches and things like that. So he's being opportunistic right now. Um, humans come here frequently, so he might not be entirely scared of humans. Um, He's not that big. Uh, and I said it before, I so rarely have incidents with bears in camp. You know, it's, it's you meet him on the trail when, uh, when you surprise him. But what worries me about that one is I screamed and he's not uh, reacting. Not, not, you know, I should have heard him bolting. He's not gone far. He's, because if he went crashing after I scared him, you'd hear the thump, 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 but you didn't. So he's just back there. I'll just make the fire big for a while and hang around and then I'll go look. He's over there now. So he started over there. He walked all the way around and now I can barely see him, but he's over there. He's heading towards the trailhead, the main trail in the creek. Kind of lets me know that he's not interested in here and he's going around. He was interested in a beaver dam maybe, but now I'm wearing high visibility. I decided to go yellow you know one of the things is you make yourself big and visible i was wearing camouflage green basically so that's not very smart of me so now i'm wearing my high visibility uh yellow rain jacket and i will walk a bit that way
Guess it doesn't feel like cooking a smoky right now. <laughs> uh, it's 808. He's doing his tour and then he's gonna go and lay down somewhere. I, I mean, they're semi-nocturnal. They don't uh, they'll go sleep, uh, conserve his energy. Yeah, I was, you know, I found this rope on the ground and I was preoccupied sort of just trying to undo these knots and then all of a sudden I looked over there and there was a bear and I didn't have a fire going. So now I'm gonna keep a bunch of little kindling just in case. So the little kindling I can throw on the fire quickly and spark it up because these, like I said earlier, I hate this poplar because the poplar is always sort of wet and doesn't burn nicely. Um, but I'll keep this fire going pretty good. Might be a late night before I go to bed tonight. This is where he was standing. He came from there and then he walked through here. He couldn't see me very well, obviously, so... Past the time, I'm just cutting these uh, smokies and pieces and just cooking them slowly. Take my time. Actually, I'm gonna talk to myself and just uh, be make a little bit of noise and uh, the smoke and a few other things and hopefully he'll just I mean it's 839 it's been an hour so I think he's gone now or she hey bear I'd sure like to see him on the slope now one good thing about this one uh, not a grizzly, just a black bear, but blonde, 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 blonde. It's the one I've seen probably three years in a row now, and uh, or one of its offsprings. And the good thing is that he's easy to spot. You know, if he's black, it's a little tougher. It's pretty awesome. I mean, he did what, you know, he came by, he went around, intersected the trail, walked all the way around, and then disappeared. I mean, I, he... He, I, I think I caught him off guard a little bit and uh, I definitely think that just wearing this green is not a good idea when confronting him. Uh, I'll put on the yellow if he comes around again and maybe even use it as a flag and wave it. He, you know, he couldn't see me. I could tell he couldn't see me or not very well. He could smell me. That's why he went around, tried to get upwind kind of thing. Then he figured out it's big, big, bad Marty. Don't mess with Big Bad Marty. Now some folks are going to watch that and probably freak out. And uh, that's understandable. But it's, it's a fact of life. I mean, we are in, uh, we're in the wild wilderness. It's, there's no guarantees here. And wild animals like bears are definitely uncertain. I, I'm surprised a bit because there was no, you know, I saw one paw on the trail and I was quite a ways back, like that was three, four kilometers. I didn't see any scat or any uh, other really fresh evidence. Oh my god, that's good. That calms the nerves. Then I'm going to make myself a tea and I'll be in heaven. All right. It is 9 o'clock and I got to go get one more uh, bottle of water. So, I'm going to talk. 
I'm gonna sing a French song. Par les sentiers sous le ciel bleu, je m'en me promener. Le sac au dos, le cœur joyeux, je me mets à chanter. Valdéry, Valdera, Valdéry, Valdera, Valdéry, Valdera, je me mets à chanter. We've had about three liters of water so far today. All right, so I tied a rope, a rock on the end of the rope, and I managed to get it on the first try. So now I'm gonna haul, hoist my food bag. Just a simple bowling, a lot of carabiner, attach the carabiner to the bag. Place the bag up. else had a yellow rope there but it's caught so that'll work raccoon can't get to it well there's no raccoons here porcupine can't get to it bear can't get to it a red sky at night is a sailor's delight and a red sky in the morning sailor take warning it had something to do with uh, cloud cover and light diffraction and things like that so if you have a light sky at night a red sky it's a good thing the forecast for tonight calls for 14 degrees celsius which is very warm um, for this time of year and for the mountains usually when the skies are clear like this then all the heat from the day quickly uh escapes up and it gets cold so it might still get cold a little bit you got to be careful with forecasts the forecast in town nearby is never quite the same as the forecast in the mountains i always subtract about uh five degrees so i'd say it might be uh nine or ten degrees tonight but uh i'm not worried one bit i'm gonna sleep very well in terms of temperature um i'm gonna sleep well i i always do A nice setup. I was here last year uh, in August with uh, Eric and Karen and uh, Chef Evan. It was the first time I hiked with Evan. Um, pretty cool day. I took a I took a diff, you know um, from home I went to uh, towards Banff 
and then I went down Highway 40 past, uh, you know, the Kananaskis Lodge and the Kiska Ski Hill, and then through the Highwood Pass, and then came down here. Um, normally, I come in from Longview. I go south of Calgary through uh, Turner Valley, Black Diamond, then Longview, and then come uh, from the east. But I'm going to go back out that way, so I'm I'm driving a, a counterclockwise loop, and I'm hiking a counterclockwise loop. The reason I'm going to go out that way is because there's a little restaurant in Longview, the Twin Twin Motor Hotel or whatever the heck it's called, and I just love their uh, steak sandwich and stuff like that. So I'm going to stop there for a night's lunch on my way out and a beer. And, and it's more fun to come in one way and go out another. Same with hikes. Uh, interesting day, so I saw a ton of uh, sheep on the road. I didn't even bother videotaping the sheep. I've seen them so many times. The bear was interesting. The big squirrel over there is interesting. Tomorrow's going to be a fantastic day. Uh, I'm calm now. I'm fed. Uh, calm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not worried that the, the bear's gone. That's no big deal. Just going to pause for a second and just listen. So over that way, I can hear the waterfall, the water coming off of uh, Lake of the Horns and uh, coming down. And then over that way, I can hear uh, the creek from the lake and the beaver dam. And if you listen, you'll hear the birds. The birds are a little harder to hear right now. They were, and I think it's because I was talking, which is another good point. When when trying to figure out where the bear is, the birds will suddenly be quiet when a large animal or a human goes by. And so when you hear birds in the distance all the time, then you know things are good. Here, I'll stop again, see if you can hear the birds. probably just hearing the wind trust me there's birds and the bats are out now so that'll take care of the, uh, the flies or the mosquitoes so now it is 1024 uh, the day after the summer solstice so we got lots of light I got a little bit more light and I think tonight's a full moon but I'm ready to go to bed so I'm gonna just sit here let this fire die down a little bit I got some juice left to drink and I'm bringing one granola bar into my tent and I got some water for tea tomorrow and that should be good. So, bear spray close to my head, water bottle, my pillow, my sleeping bag. Um, my backpack is under the awning. Rain jacket, miscellaneous pouches, and uh, you know, just habits. Uh, make sure things are exactly in the same place all the time. So in the middle of the night, if I need to find something, I can find it quickly. Uh, the most likely thing I'll need is a bit of water if I wake up thirsty. I got a granola bar if I wake up hungry. A little bit of food, you know, 
uh, at about three in the morning, I always sort of wake up and if I eat a quick little snack, then I go back to sleep. It's something to do with the metabolism. Otherwise, bear spray close at hand and uh, I'm just gonna change into uh, some fleece pants, take off this shirt, take off my glasses and go to bed. All right, folks, good night and uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning.